Hello and welcome to Cardio Life. I'm James Baggett, founder of Cardio Magazine, and today on the show I'm chatting to Hendy Group CEO Paul Hendy. Good afternoon, Paul. Afternoon, James. Thank you very much for joining us, Paul. Now, I'm going to give your, um, your group a, a quick intro, um, some amazing history that you guys have got. You've been around since 1859. Uh, last year celebrated your 160th anniversary. Um, we're going to go into all the detail about how that was all set up. But just I'm going to explain that over the last uh, 12 months, you bought the Westover Group with 18 sites. You're now up to 60 dealerships in total, approaching uh, the £1 billion turnover mark, uh, most commonly known for a long history representing Ford. In fact, the first Ford dealership to be set up in the UK uh, in Southampton. You're now representing 18 manufacturers across the South Coast, um, and a huge number of staff, 1,850. You're the fifth generation chief executive. Quite a history, Paul. Um, instead of me babbling on about it, I'll let you actually tell the history. Um, so, Paul, let's let's go into where it all began. Where, where did it start well, with that Ford dealership back in Southampton? How did that come about? Well, well firstly, James, th thank you for that introduction because it uh, that was amazing and. Um makes you incredibly proud when you hear when you hear that so so thank you for that yeah so the first Ford dealership in Britain 1910 uh, Henry Ford was on his way to Manchester where they were building the Model T the factory up there met with my great great uncle Percy and um, we, we managed to wrestle Henry to the ground and become Britain's first Ford dealer uh, in, in November of 1910 so that's 110 years now with the Ford Motor Company and uh, as, you, as you've said, we've seen significant growth in the last four or five years and uh, now represent uh, 19 manufacturers. So um, the group's grown uh, its footprint across the South Coast predominantly, which is exactly how we want it. Uh, and we, uh, we really want to be a part of the community. So it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey and um, never a dull moment. No, I'm, I'm sure. Um, over, the, uh, over the last few years, there, there seems to have been a step change with, with Henry. I mean, you, you, you've clearly made some decisions to really go for growth. Um, am I right in that assumption? Is that something that, you've, that you're really targeting now? Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah and, and obviously, uh, in a me as measured a way as is possible with that. So we identified and still continue to identify a number of targets that we're looking for. Um, and we, we, we absolutely made a conscious decision that we wanted to stay in the business uh, and grow it. And, um, you know, we, we, we think we've, we've got a pretty good formula. Uh, we've been around a long time, so we've, we've tried and tested it. And um, absolutely, we wanted to, to, to stay and, and be a bigger part of, of an industry that when it gets in your blood, as you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing uh, thrilling industry it's been a challenging couple of months um but uh, it's it's something that's very dear to our heart and um something we wanted to continue in and um and grow and thrive um paul tell me a little bit about your history in the motor trade then i mean clearly it's clearly it's in the family i mean where did it all start for you what did you do first oh gosh well that that, that would have been coming in with my father at weekends and probably annoying him, I think, but opening the post and taking things around the dealership and delivering it and little things like that. Then I first started in the parts operation, uh, then the service business, uh, used cars, marketing, and so on and so forth. I spent a year traveling uh, with a great pal of mine um, where we went to America, Australia, and New Zealand, visiting various car businesses out there, learn the trade. And then, and then work my way up through the company, which I think is, is, is hugely important to have experienced uh, all the various different challenges with all, all the different departments. Um, I was probably better at some than others. Um, and then you find something that particularly interests you because if you're going to do it for, for a long time as a career, you want to you do, find that niche in the business that uh, you can excel at as well as enjoy. Um, for me, that was on the, on the sales side of the business. Um, having even worked in the, having worked in the after sales operations, so, and then you, you on you go and you become a dealer principal. Hopefully, if you're lucky, you do a good job at that, and then you get a couple of three dealerships and so on. So, um, certainly, I was put to work. That was the main thing. I think it stands you in great stead going forward, and um, it builds up that that resilience that you need. Uh, 
uh, as you look to want to take on more. So, uh, what what's the succession plan? Have you got some? You got children who are, are in the business? Yeah, I have. I've got I've got three children. So my, my eldest son uh, Will is in the business. He's the, the marketing manager for our car stores. We've got five car stores on the on the car and van side of things. So so Will is um, and doing a marketing degree. Uh, my daughter is a is a is a centre host at our Jaguar Land Rover dealership in Christchurch, which she thoroughly enjoys. Uh, I've got a niece who's also working in the car stores and my youngest son, who's 18, who was actually supposed to be doing his A-levels next week, but he's not now. Uh, so I don't know if he's pleased, disappointed or what, but um, yeah, he's, he's then looking for university potentially, or he may too come in the business. So um, generation six is, is, is in the business. Uh, like me, never pushed to do it. You, you quite simply have got to want to do it because this is a tough business and uh, you, you have to understand um, all the very many facets of it. It's hard work, um, but uh, thrilling at the same time. So none of the kids, myself included, we were never pushed into it. We always wanted to do it. So I'm delighted that, that they're having a go themselves. Um, Paul, tell me a little bit about that that Westover purchase and, and, and how that came about a year or so ago. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I live in uh, in Bournemouth, so I live in, in the sort of heart of their territory. We used to have a Ford business in, in Bournemouth all those years ago, uh, hence why I lived there and schooled there. So we, we know that we knew the group extremely well. I knew Peter Wood, the owner, and Paul Dillon, the managing director. We, we would buy some, some cars off them in the past, so we were customers of them. And it was a conversation, like all these things, that starts somewhere and, and, and gathers pace, and then there's a snowball effect. And, you know, it was uh, another uh, private business, very successful, local. And we want to preserve the legacy of what they created uh, and bring them in, into ours and uh, take it forward. And it's been, yet again... Uh, a brilliant um, integration, really good people. Um, common goal in mind, they want to do a good job. They want to look after the customers. They want to grow their careers. And, and what we can do is we've, we've grown the business and shaped it across the South Coast is, is we, we don't want people to have a job. We want people to have a career. And if we can provide that career without relocating or moving house, you might change brand or you certainly might change location but there's an opportunity for growth. And um, we, we've seen some incredible successes with that, uh, whether it be from people who've been with our uh, old Hendy for want of a, a, a parlance for many, many years, to people who, when we acquired the lifestyle business, have gone on to forge amazing careers, and tremendous growth. And that's what it's all about. And then we create an incredible energy. And at the heart of all of that, we look after the customers, and uh, it's a formula that seems to be working. So uh, we're really pleased with it. Um, Paul, up until the lockdown, how, how were things going? And how, how were your brands performing? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, in the main, pretty well. I mean, quarter four, I think we all experienced as an industry um, with, with Brexit, which we seems to not been spoken about for a while, doesn't it? But up until um, end of last year. Uh, Brexit probably put the brakes on quarter four and that was challenging and once that had resolved itself or certainly we got past the decision when we came to quarter one uh, there, there was a real uh, momentum in a positive fashion great mood great spirit and um, of course uh, we had a good January we had a good February we had a tremendous order bank building for March we were on on target for everything in March uh, both financially and with all of our uh, manufacturer colleagues. And like everybody else, um, the brakes were put on. So that, that certainly took the steam out of things. And then, of course, focused on lockdown. But we were really starting to get a, a warm feeling about 2020, as I'm sure many of my other colleagues were after what was a tough close to 2019. So when it came to that lockdown, Paul, what went through your head? I mean, it was obviously a very, very difficult time for most trade. Yeah, I mean, uh, driving away on the, the last day, as it were, to see empty forecourts of cars, I made sure I went past, I don't know, half a dozen or 10 dealerships on the way home just to see that we closed them up and locked them up 
um, as safely as, as one could. Uh, really, was uh, it was an emotional time, I think, because it was so surreal. Um, I think we were all a little numb with the speed and the shock of it all. Whilst we'd obviously talked about it as a potential um, threat to our business that, uh, that we'd all have to close, there's always that bit of you, that little bit of hope that it'll go away. But then the re harsh reality dawns. And I think um, uh, then very quickly, uh, as one does, because in this business, I've, I've used the word resilience before, it's a tough business. And I think as an industry, we, we don't give ourselves enough credit for how we, certainly as retailers and operators, um, made us some pretty tough stuff and very, very quickly uh, we had to dust ourselves down and uh, go about sorting out how we'd operate under lockdown. And um, my team around me have been brilliant. They've been amazing and worked incredibly hard um, to put us in as good a position as, as we possibly could be as we, we, we seek to now emerge from hibernation. So what have you managed to do um, during that period? Have you managed any sales or, or managed any business at all? We, we had four workshops open uh, in various regions, looking after the NHS and the care workers, um, predominantly really around uh, commercial vehicles, some ambulance work and so on. Um, but everything else of the 60 were closed. And um, yes, uh, as, as things unfolded during lockdown, uh, we, we ramped up our online uh, activity, particularly on used cars and commercial vehicles. And um, we have taken a number of deposits, reservations, which in the last couple of three weeks, we've just started to do home delivery on very recently. Um, dipped our toe in the water there. Uh, they went extremely well. We can now do 30 a day, which is okay. Um, and of course, uh, we've, we've been really sharpening up our digital and online activity throughout and uh, pleased to say that with everything crossed, if we emerge on the 1st of June with the physical locations open, uh, that'll be good news. But on Monday, probably similar to many of my colleagues, we opened a number of our workshops as of this Monday. So it's, it's quite amazing. James, how time has gone so quickly. Uh, I think when we all uh, sat there in the first few days thinking, gosh, this is going to be three, six, nine weeks, um, it's absolutely flown by. We've certainly been incredibly busy every day. It's quite amazing doing Zoom calls or Microsoft Teams calls, and so it goes on. Um, uh, we have a daily check-in as, as an ops team. So... The days have gone incredibly quickly. They've been unbelievably busy. And, and here we are seeking to emerge. Well, workshops are open, as I say, as of yesterday and busy, which is good. Demand is really encouraging. And I think those are the messages um, that we're all feeling internally that um, there's a real good mood and spirit about that people genuinely now want to get back at it and um, try and get this behind us and, and get going again. So, Paul, have you actually had any downtime at all during this? I mean, a number of dealer, dealer group bosses I've, I've spoken to have basically said, well, this is, it's actually been quite quite nice to have some time to think about my business. Have you actually had any? It doesn't sound like it. Um, yeah, uh, the days have been have been busy. Some, some days you're behind your desk very early till very late. Other days where you have got that few hours to contemplate things. We've been, we've been really disciplined um, with ourselves to say, uh, to prevent too many calls at weekends, for example. And I know some people might say, well, every day is a Saturday, every day is a Sunday. Well, it isn't actually, um, if you're working. Uh, just to try and keep some sort of balance um, and make sure that people do get time with their family, um, do get time to switch off, do get time to, to think about the business, to work on the business, not just in the business. And that's as important as some of the other things that we do because we had to carefully navigate uncharted waters certainly in our lifetimes such that we could emerge uh, as strong as possible and and really ready to go and it's been quite amazing the amount of work involved in reopening the businesses making sure that had been 
carefully worked through and choreographed correctly versus where effectively we pulled the shutters down pretty quickly overnight. So how, how you go about opening 60 businesses and making sure there's enough demand there for, be, for whether it be the technicians and so on and so forth. Um, our facilities teams uh, across our five regions have now been in for in excess of two weeks doing that, making sure everything works again and so on and so forth, giving the place a good clean, thorough, deep clean and so on. So there's, there's always been something to work on. And of course, working with our manufacturers uh, to make sure that everything's in order for when we do return. And of course, we had, a, we had a significant order bank as we were going into the last week of March uh, to look to see if we can best deliver it between now and month end or certainly early part of June. So um, never a dull moment, James. No, I mean, it certainly sounds like it. Um, I'm very interested on those home deliveries, though. I mean, you're, you're one um, group that are, the first group I've probably spoken to who have actually really taken the ball by the horns there when it comes to, to delivering those. 30 a day is very impressive. What's been the challenge setting, those, setting that up? And, and will it be something that you continue to do in the future? Uh, initially, the challenge was, was manpower because obviously uh, we had a number of our people, uh, colleagues were furloughed. So uh, the, the sheer logistics of, of actually getting the, the, the car to one of the open dealerships such that it could be cleaned, prepared, paperwork. So, so it is, was a clunky process, which like anything, and again, we don't give ourselves enough credit as an industry, um, after a while, we, we get better at it and we start to be able to finesse it. Um, hence why we can, we can do 30 a day. Now, whilst that sounds a lot, and it, it's a fair number, uh, for our business, it's, it's clearly not enough to survive on long term and we would need to be doing significantly more than that. Do, do I think um, it will be a feature of, of how we go forward? Yes, I do. I honestly believe the numbers that we do will be modest and we 30 is quite modest in terms of our overall volumes. Um, I, I honestly believe when, when we return to work, um, they, it won't be the norm home delivery for us. We clearly would still like to see people come to, to the premises to, to get that physical experience of the dealership. Um, so I think click and collect initially will be, will be as, as much a feature and, and then as time hopefully moves on and, and things relax just that little bit more, uh, um, the delivery experience, um, you know, may change because of various protocols. But, but that experience, that joy of new, um, is something that uh, in our business, in our world, isn't it? That is a real thrill for, for the customer to come in and, and get their new vehicle, bring the family and so on. And it, and that is, is something, I think the whole theatre of it um, is something we mustn't lose because people are making a significant purchase and, and should be treated accordingly. People on the home delivery side were just obviously very keen to get their new car. We're quite happy that there was that, was less theatre. Um, it was obviously a bit difficult with distancing and a slightly sterile process, no pun intended. But they were happy with that because there was a need or a want, a real serious want to get the vehicle. So I think it will change. I think there'll be much more of a blend now. It'd be inter certainly be interesting to see how that, that changes going forward. Um, Paul, what are your thoughts on this June the 1st date? Um, everybody in the motor trade seems to be preparing for June the 1st, but we haven't actually had official confirmation that car dealerships are going to be included in that first wave. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think we will be? And, and, and how are you preparing for that reopening? Well, like you, James, like you say there, I mean, we, we've heard nothing to the contrary yet about the 1st of June. We've also had nothing confirmed other than some of the rumour and conjecture. We are uh, preparing and readying ourselves for the 1st of June. There's obviously lots to do in terms of preparing forecourts, cleaning cars, moving vehicles around, etc. So we will carry on as if the 1st of June is the date. I've heard nothing this week to the contrary, but as you say, I've had nothing confirmed. And of course, that's for England. I mean, our, our colleagues, dealer colleagues in, in Wales, Scotland and Ireland may have alternative dates because, of course, they haven't had the same confirmation around their workshops either yet. So um, 
I really hope so. I, I think we we all know in the in the in the showrooms they are in the main uh, a big physical space and and they can be made bigger by removing vehicles to create enough distancing. We can of course manage the number of people across the threshold. Um, uh, as, as you see in, in other retail industries now, garden centres are open. Fantastic. I think, I think the, the public are used to this um, way of entering buildings and, and waiting their turn and so on. So nothing there to stop us. Let, let's just hope. And of course, we're, we're a big part of the fabric of the UK and, and business, aren't we? And we need to get running again. All of our supplier base needs us to get running again. And um, crucial. Yeah, let's hope the, uh, the, that June the first day is, is stuck to. Um, what about your, your preparations for in, in your dealerships? I and mean, what have you put in place with regards to, to PPE and screens, etc.? And, and has that been a tough thing to do? Um, not, not so much a, a tough thing to do, but an incredibly huge body of work. And um, our, our team have put that together seriously worked uh, a number of days and weeks on it so we've we've, we've gone with the the view that we, we wish to overwhelm rather than underwhelm so we've got um, a big uh, document of protocols that every colleague has to to read and study and acknowledge that they've read and studied prior to their return to work on their return that the, there will be um briefings for everybody about how those protocols will work because absolutely it's it's in um, ingrained in us to ensure that uh, our colleagues are safe and that our customers are safe so that confidence can return to everybody in in working in in what will be the new normal or however long that may last but to make sure that everybody can do so as comfortably as possible and as confidently as possible Obviously, things are going to be different. We know that. We're seeing that from where we we go out and about ourselves. And, um, yeah, sure, so we, we will have all the PPE there. We'll have all the screens, all the sanity stations, uh, where possible, um, one, one, one entrance and another exit, so using different doors, again, where possible. Um, each site will have a marshal helping people understand where to go. And, of course, um, if people have to wait and wait their turn, which is unusual for us, isn't it? Um, or by appointment only, which is what we're finding in the workshops this week. Um, the, the public are, are accepting of this at the moment, probably far more than they've ever done, because that's how it is at, the, at, at this moment in time. So, um, yeah, that was, an that was a huge amount of work because we wanted to make sure that we got it right. And of course, nobody knew what the date was going to be when it was going to need to be enacted. So that was also part of the challenge. What are your thoughts on, on the actual demand that's out there? I mean, you, you look at Germany and they've, they've, they've had significantly less numbers of, of customers through the doors. There's talk of a scrappage scheme now, gathering pace with everybody that I speak to. The more it's talked about, as uh, Alison said from, uh, from Group PSA yesterday on the website, the more it's talked about, the, the longer people will put off buying a car. What are your yeah. thoughts as a dealer with, with 60 sites out there of what demand's going to be like? Yeah, well, we're already seeing uh, already in the workshops now uh, really healthy demand, fantastic demand, and we, we're, we're, we've 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 got that demand going out already into the first week of June, uh, which is really encouraging. And so, so I, I do think from from an after sales point of view, the workshops uh, already are experiencing uh, demand that's been really positive, uh, and the knock on effect of that into the parts operations. Are, really encouraging as well and, and we're just starting to see um, you know our wholesale business really start to ignite again I, I think genu genuinely um, that there will be a bounce back ever the optimist I do think there will be a bounce back uh, I do think the manufacturers will inject the necessary stimuli they're already working on that again it's about picking your moment picking the time and if there was some clearer guidance as to when when we could open and get going, that would all help. Um, and I, I know talking to my uh, colleagues at the OEMs who were engaged in talks with government about whether it's a scrappage scheme or something else, so that will be there, be around the corner. 
there'll be a pent up demand from those people who've come to end of uh, term on um, their finance agreements, whether that be traditional finance or, or um, lease purchase, so on and so forth. And, um, and I think genuinely in, in the used car space, um, as, as dealers, we're, we're better now even in used cars and renewals. Uh, and that was quite a buoyant market going into the lockdown. So I, I think, and we're already hearing in some of the business that we've been doing online, uh, that there will be a pent up demand. Uh, I was talking to some colleagues in the US, they're already seeing uh, demand that they never imagined as, they, as, as people have emerged from, from this. So yeah, uh, again, in this industry, ever the optimists, but um, without getting carried away with ourselves, we know it will be different. But I think those people that are making appointments to come and see us or wishing to continue to transact online are, are showing serious intent that they want to take it forward. Um, and add to that manufacturers who are going to need to stimulate a market as well, because they will. Um, you know, it could just be um, as the sun comes out for the, for the summer, uh, a, a good time for us. And I think we've all deserved that. Let's hope so. Um, Paul, what do you think your business is going to look like in, in six months' time? I mean, I, I, and also, how long is it going to take you to recover from this? Well, I think, I think the financial recovery is, is going to be, uh, let's not kid ourselves, a good 18 months to two years. You know, um, we're all going to be uh, a bit battered and bruised uh, for, for us, for ourselves. Uh, you know, we will survive. Um, I, I think regrettably, not just in our industry, I think we'd all be naive to think that that won't be the case for everybody. And that's a tragedy. That's very, very sad. But for us, we're, we're, we will be OK. Um, the financial repair will take, uh, you know, a, a couple of good years of decent trading um, to get this truly behind us. And that's, that's the same for everybody, I think. Um, but we, we, we will do it. We will carry on. And sadly, within it as well, uh, those that don't survive will bring opportunity for other businesses that um, can then take that opportunity and, and take it forward. And I do think there will be, like any recession and let's face it this will create a, a deep recession it creates opportunity um so there'll be plenty of that i'm sure um but it's 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 it will have tested people's resolve um it will have tested their resilience uh it will certainly have tested people's imagination as to how to emerge and our team, and, it, and I'm sure I'm speaking for a, for a number of dealers and their teams, it, under incredible stress and pressure that this has created, um, it's been amazing to see how people have operated and, you know, put in such an incredible shift to, to make sure that we're in as good a place as we are. And I'm sure other my other colleagues out there would say the same about their teams. It's it's shown people's metal amazingly. What are you looking forward to the most about getting back to work properly, Paul? <laughs> um, I've really not been away from work. It's just been been different being at home. I think you, you clearly miss miss the buzz of, of being with your colleagues and being in the showroom, seeing customers and and them experiencing the joy of new, or thanking you for a great service when when they leave. You know, it's that human interaction, isn't it? That's what I think we all miss. And that's what's been unique and um, very different. Yes, talking over um, Skype or, or Zoom is, is, is one way of keeping that interaction, but it is very different. So I think, I think it's, it's that, isn't it? It's that general buzz of business that we do. We, that's why we do it. We love it. Uh, we keep coming back for more. And... Um, Long may that continue. And I, I, you know, I think this has been an amazing, we will look back on this as, a, as an amazing experience, um, if nothing else. And uh, it, during this period, what, what have you learned that you, that you will take forward from this crisis and, and change? Cool. I think, I think it's accelerated a lot of our thinking, hasn't it, around can we, how much can we do online? Where's that going? And, Online was our only portal, so we had to get on with it. And 
sharpen it up. And we, we've all done that, haven't we? Um, I think it will accelerate that whole bricks and mortar conversation versus hits and clicks. I absolutely believe it's a blend of both. I don't think it's one or the other. Um, so I do think it will be a blend of, of, yes, we need the bricks and mortar. We need absolutely those uh, facilities, physical facilities. Um, but also we need to be totally in, in line and in tune with customers who wish to take that transaction, even, even if it's now all the way, and we've seen that. But I think rather than where we were talking about some of this stuff or dipping our toe in the water, we quite frankly had to get on with it. And I think that will change and shape a lot of things as we go forward. But what we've seen is the real catalyst to do it has unfortunately been something like COVID-19 that's made a paradigm shift, hasn't it? It's just, we've had to get on with it and react and respond. And amazingly, we're all doing it. So uh, I think we're living in that new normal now. and We just have to see what the new rhythm looks like. And, and Paul, finally, I, I know you've been um, chatting to your colleagues quite regularly, but I mean, would you like to take this opportunity to give your, to give your staff a message? Oh, they've, they've been amazing. They've been so patient. Uh, we, we've communicated, uh, whether it be every week or, or every 10 days, just to keep them informed of what's going on. There was a real danger that there'd be such a lot of silence, um, which would only create more worry and anxiety. Um, the, the, the key worker team that, that we had in has been incredible. Um, everything is, is set for a return to work. In, in, the, in the safest conditions we can possibly create so that we can uh, engender enough confidence in everybody, whether it be colleagues or customers alike, so that we can get back to doing what we do best and enjoying ourselves in, in an industry that is, is fast-paced, ever-changing. It, it just doesn't rest, does it? Highly competitive, but there's no problem with that. And um, great products. Amazing products, haven't we? Never seen the, the number of new models coming forward. Um, and that's why we do it. That's the thrill and the buzz. So um, I, I wish we could have all got back sooner, clearly. So uh, huge, huge thanks for, for everybody bearing with us. And just a, a really big promise that um, we're here to not just survive, we're here to thrive and get back to enjoying long, healthy and fulfilled careers. Paul, thank you very much for your time today. I wish you the best of luck with the with getting back to work on June the first and uh, and for the for the next few years ahead. So thank you very much for giving up your time. Thank thank you, James. Great to talk. Nice to talk to you. So uh, this week I've got some uh, more great guests lined up. Tomorrow I'm chatting to the supercar dealer Tom Hartley. On Thursday it's Sangyong's uh, managing director Nick Laird and chairman Jim Tyrrell. And on Friday I'm talking to Pendragon CEO. Bill Burn. If you want to get involved in car dealer lives like this one, you can email me at james at blackballmedia.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter at car dealer ed or find me on LinkedIn and send me a message there. Uh, remember, the other thing is we've published our new latest digital edition of Car Dealer Magazine. You can download it completely free of charge on our website or read it on the issue app. Uh, just have a look at car dealer magazine. .co.uk and also on there you'll find a full schedule of our car dealer lives coming up. Uh, that just leaves me to say thanks once again to Paul. It's been absolutely fantastic to chat to him today um, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>